my quilty friends, it's Stacy of stacy-lee.com and today I've got a really super quick and easy project for you. We're going to be making a five minute heart coaster. Now I have to admit this idea is not mine. My friend Louise shared this idea with me over on my Facebook group. What she did was she took my pumpkin coaster tutorial, swapped the shape out for a heart and used the instructions to make this cute little heart coaster. So that's exactly what we're going to do today. We're going to copy Louise's idea using my tutorial. I hope you like it. To make a five minute heart coaster, you're going to need two pieces of fabric at approximately seven inches by seven inches and one piece of batting at seven inches by seven inches. Now you might want to use regular batting or you could also use insole bright batting, which would just make your coasters a little bit more protective of the table. Plus you'll need a heart shaped template. You can find mine. I've got a free download. There's a link in the description below, or you could just simply draw your own heart. And of course you'll need a sewing machine, thread, pins, paper and fabric scissors. The finished size of our heart will be approximately 5 inches by 5 inches. So I've got my heart template and like I said you can find that in the description below. All I'm going to do is cut it out just outside that black line there. So I've finished cutting out my template. I'm just going to pop that aside for a minute and take my fabrics. Now I'm using scrap fabric because this is a great scrap buster project. Just make sure if you are using scrap fabric that your template fits inside the fabric like mine does there. And then what we're going to do is place our fabrics right sides together. And if you are using directional fabric, just make sure you're happy with which way it's facing. And then what we're going to do is take our batting and actually pop that underneath. We're going to cut all three layers at a time just to save time to make this a super quick five minute project. Then I'm going to take my template and pop it on top and I am going to make sure that all three layers fit underneath the template. We don't accidentally, let's say, want the template over here because I'd be missing the edge of this top fabric and I'd be missing a piece of the batting underneath. And if you cut your fabric at seven inches by seven inches square, you'll have plenty of room. But like I said, I am using scrap. So making sure my template fits inside all three layers, I will pin it in place. And we want our template to be sitting flat. We don't want it all warped or out of place, which it does get a little bit warped from putting the pins in. But we want to make sure it's as flat as possible with those pins in. And then once we're happy that it's pinned nicely, what I'm going to do is take my fabric scissors and cut around the edge of my template, creating our heart shape. So I'm being careful not to cut the paper. And then we can use our template many times. We're also getting a nice heart shape if I just cut right next to the paper template. Okay, once we're finished, we're just going to remove the pins. I want to keep it all in place, we don't want to be moving it around because it's all sandwiched together perfectly right there. So pop your template aside, try not to move it too much. Now let's place our pins back in. Making sure all those three layers have stayed how they were. Okay, now I'm just going to take a chalk pen and mark my opening. So all I'm going to do is take my template, place it back on top, and then when, where I can see these two dots here, I'm just going to lift it up and put them approximately in the same place. Now it doesn't have to be perfect, it's just showing us where we're going to start sewing, go all the way around, and then stop. So now what we're going to do is just sew along that edge, like I said, starting here, going all the way around and then stopping here. So today I'm using glide thread. I've got my stitch length at 2.5 and I am using a quarter inch foot. Uh, just work out the best guide for you to get that quarter inch. And I'm going to start, oh that pin's in the way. I'm going to start right on that dot 
and stitch forward a few stitches and then do a back stitch. I like to do that so that when you turn it right sides out, it doesn't pull at your stitches. So then when I come to the edge, I'll make sure my needle's down, lift my foot up and turn. And now what I'm going to do is carry on around the shape of my heart. So when you come to the curve part, just take your time and try and line up your whatever is your guide with the edge of your heart there. And then if you find you can't quite get around, you can always just stop, make sure your needle's down, lift your foot up and just turn your heart a little bit just to get around corners if you are struggling. The best thing to do is if you are struggling is to slow down. When I come to the V of the heart, I am going to come down further than you would think I need to, to come to the center and then I will turn. I'm going to go one more stitch, needle down, lift my foot up and turn. And that was perfect, even though it did actually look like I'd gone too far. And now I can see I'm coming up to the dot that I drew, so then I'll just do a back stitch and go forward, cut my thread and finish. Now what we're going to do is cut off all that excess. So now just trim your threads and then what we're going to do is just trim some of the bulk off. So particularly around here when we turn it right sides out, this part here will be very bulky. We want to take a little bit off the corner here and then also up the top here. I find it easier just to sort of take, come along and cut this whole side off, being careful not to cut my stitches because they're going to be more ornamental than washed a lot. So I find it doesn't really matter. Or if you don't want to do this, you could clip um, little pieces out like this, which is the more traditional way of doing it. Again, just being really careful not to accidentally cut your stitches. That's just a personal preference. I, because like I said, we're not gonna wash it a lot. I just prefer to just cut it off like that. And then, doesn't matter so much here, but just on this corner here, I will just cut a little bit off so it's not so bulky. Okay. Now what we're gonna do is turn it right sides out. So I'm gonna find my little opening I'm going to go between the two fabrics and then I'm going to put my fingers in. It, now, unfortunately, I haven't left a big opening because I find the smaller it is, the nicer finish we get on our heart shape. But you could leave the opening a little bit bigger if you'd want to. So I'm going to open it up in between the two fabrics. Just pop my fingers in as best I can. But then I'm just going to open it up and then find the side. And all we need to be able to do is catch it. So you could also just push it through with your finger there. Can you see how I've done that? I'll just, I'm gonna do that again. I think that was a bit confusing. So I'm gonna find my opening. I'm gonna put my fingers in there, but I'm also gonna find an edge and feel my way to the edge. And then on this side, I can just also help by pushing it in so I can grab it. And then I'll pull it through the opening. And this is always fiddly. And then I'll just push it all through, like so, getting my heart shape. But then I'm just going to use a point turner to finish it off. So with my point turner, I'm just going to pop it in the opening and push out all those seams. So they're sitting really nicely. Um, if we don't do this, we don't get a proper heart shape. Because what could happen is it could stay like that, that seam, and not be opened out. And you can see how would be losing part of that nice rounded edge there. So I'm just going to go around and check all those seams are sitting nicely, including the bottom of our heart. Now, if you don't have a point turner, you could use something else that's blunt. I know some people like to use a chopstick or the blunt end of a pencil. So once we're happy, let's give that a quick press. So now we're just going to press it and make sure it's all sitting nicely. I will find the opening and check that I'm happy with how that's sitting. 
and because they are going to be reversible you might just want to check on the front and the back so that's looking pretty good to me so let's give that a press and then we can also just check the back again make sure that's sitting nicely especially the opening there okay let's finish it off so if we take a look at this one that i've already finished the next thing we're going to do is stitch around the edge doing our top stitch which just makes it look really nice and tidy as well as closing up our opening and then we will do a little bit of extra stitching just to make it look super cute and quilted so all i'll do is take my chalk pencil we know that we'll go around the edge of the heart but then i'm just going to draw how i'm going to do my quilted detail now you can do it however you'd like but i find it looks cute to start from the very bottom come up and echo the shape and then i come across and all the way over and then back down to where we started it's very hard to see in this light and then we come up and around and again echoing the shape of the heart and then back down i think that's i can just see that and it is hard to see so long as you can see it roughly where you're going to go or you might just want to quilt it all random and do little squiggles or whatever you like you can't see it very well there but basically i've drawn these lines i've gone up echoed the heart shape come out and around back down and then up and around and again back down okay so now let's sew that so just finding my opening and popping a pin in the opening is really little and because it's pressed i'm finding that it is sitting quite nicely but we'll just pop that in just in case but what we're going to do is start down on this bottom corner here and i'm going to stitch with about one eighth of an inch seam allowance it needs to be small enough so that it's going to catch the opening which was sewn at about a quarter of an inch remember so let's sew our top stitch with about one eighth of an inch seam allowance and i won't worry about a back stitch because we will come back over the top of this so i'm starting at the very bottom corner and now i'm just going to go around the entire edge and i am still stitching at stitch length 2.5 Now it is best to always sew around those curves, curved edges but once you come into the V you might need to just stop, leave your needle down and lift your foot up and turn a little bit and if you get stuck on some of these curves you can also do that. But just go nice and slow, there's no rush. Oh, I popped my pin on the wrong way around so I'm just going to make sure my opening is nicely pinned closed okay and coming back down to the point where I started now I need to make sure my needles down lift my foot up and just turn so I can follow that echo heart line that I drew and now I'm just going to follow those lines So I've come coming right back down to where I started, leaving my needle down, lifting my foot up and turning it and now I'll just carry on and follow that second line that I drew. And then coming right down to that corner again and just so there aren't too many stitches in the same place, I am just going to leave my needle down, lift my foot up and then turn and then follow along that top stitch and do a back stitch cut my thread and now let's just give that one last press so it's looking all wonky now i'll give it a press which will just flatten it out and make it look really pretty and then we'll turn it over on the back and give that a press and then i will just tidy up these threads by just 
trimming them. Okay, that solved that. And then we have our finished heart. So there we have my five minute heart coaster tutorial. Now they're perfect for Valentine's Day, but they'd also be perfect any time of the year just by changing the fabric up to suit the season. Thanks so much for joining me. If you've got any questions, make sure you leave them in the comments below. Don't forget you can find my free heart shape template over on my website. I'll put a link in the description below and I'll see you again next week.